Hey guys, Luke Nessler from the Moto Marketing Podcast. I want to tell you about the promotion that Racer X is running from now until January 6th. Look, if you subscribe to Racer X, renew your subscription, you're going to get access to the 50 years of Pro Motocross collector's edition calendar right these are limited while supplies last you get a lot with this offer i want to tell you a little bit about what you do get so in addition to the calendar you're going to get one year subscription or obviously like i said the renewal uh 2021 limited edition celebrating 50 years of pro motocross a 25 dollars rocky mountain e-gift card a digital subscription to racer x for a friend, it's an $80 value. It's 30 bucks. Look, this calendar is, man, it's super cool. I'm flipping through. I've already seen photos of uh, Doug Henry. Um, we've got uh, Mark Bomber Barnett. Let's see, what do we got in, in March? My birthday is in March. So, Jeff Ward, Jeff Stanton battle. Really cool stuff. Um, limited edition. I've got one for the office. I'm going to hang it up right after this episode. And I encourage you to jump on it as well. Go to racerxonline.com forward slash moto marketing. Subscribe today. Hey, I want to tell you about Moto Brand. Moto Brand was founded during the 2020 COVID 19 pandemic when the sport that we live for was taken from so many of us, whether it's cycling or moto, waking up on a Saturday morning knowing that your local track was closed, uh, there, there would be no supercross, and for many of us, that we couldn't even hit our favorite local riding spot or trail with our crew. We are forced to be reminded of how much the sport of moto and cycling truly means to us. Moto Brand represents a collection of individuals that not only ride, but live to ride. It's what we think of at all times of the day, and sometimes at a detriment to your relationship with your significant other. It's for those that look at their motorcycle or their bicycle as part of their identity. Maybe it's the way that you bond with your son or your daughter or your spouse. Perhaps it's your way to blow off stress of your day job, or even, hey, it is what it is. Maybe even it's your marriage. This sport is more than just a sport. For many of us, it's a way of life. It's what keeps us ticking. It's what keeps us living. Moto Brand was created for a purpose, to be more than just a shirt that you can throw on in the morning, but these designs represent who you are and what you stand for. So I encourage you to head over to the motobrand.com, check out our collection. We have a pedal collection and we have a throttle collection, and there are more designs to come that stand for something. So head over to the motobrand.com, and we'll see you there. Welcome, Welcome to the Moto Marketing Podcast, presented by Racer X, the podcast for moto industry professionals, entrepreneurs, and riders. If you want to grow your brand and business in today's digital first world, you have to know how to turn a stranger into a fan, turn a like into a customer. You have to know how to turn attention into dollars. This podcast is dedicated to keeping you in the know on real marketing tactics that work in the moto world so that you grow your business and help grow the sport. Get ready to learn from the very same marketing experts trusted by Racer X, Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, GNCC, and NBC Sports. They'll help you navigate the world of digital marketing for your moto brand. This is the Moto Marketing Podcast. Podcast. Presented by Racer X. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Moto Marketing Podcast. We have a return guest today, somebody that was uh, one of the most popular guests we've had on the show, uh, Tyler Pierce, a.k.a. the Vegan Cyclist. Um, I reached out to him uh, Christmas week and was like, man, you got to come back on. He's in the middle of a Train Like a Pro challenge to where for 30 days he's vlogging his training and he's training like a professional cyclist and in that time he's needed some ideas for content so he's touched a couple of different times on the topic that is ever popular on this show sponsorship uh now we've had some awesome guests come on and talk about sponsorship in the sport but i'm going to go ahead and say this now because i believe this will end up being the case if you're an amateur athlete if you're a professional athlete in the sport that you're trying to wrap your head around how can I get sponsored? How can I can how can I do this? You have to understand it's a two-way street. This is going to be one of the most valuable episodes that I've ever done um, because while Tyler isn't a professional moto athlete, um, 
He's in the cycling realm. He knows moto. He understands the sport. He understands the space. It works the same as far as the way sponsorship goes. This is going to be one of the most important episodes, valuable episodes. Uh, And if you're in the industry, I think you'll find this extremely entertaining. Tyler, welcome back to the show. Man, I'm excited to dive into this. You said you want to go deep. Um, yeah, welcome well, that to the was show. Such a hype. That was such a hype man <laughs> intro. Like I, I better, I better bring the heat now. Well, dude, the content that, that was... you've put out in the last week uh, about sponsorship and really bringing it back to how you've gotten sponsored and what you do for your sponsors and what they expect of you and you expect of them. It's a, it should be a light bulb moment for so many people. I'm going through it with my, uh, EMTB, uh, team. And I've learned from a lot of what you have said in your video. So that's why I wanted to bring you back on. Um, I'm just going to put the ball in your court. Where do, where do you want to start? Yeah. I mean, so I want to break this into two different parts, one for the brands and, uh, Sorry, man. There's like a train. I was going to say, I think there's a train going by. So t- you're, you're in a, you're, you're traveling right now, right? Are you in the motorhome? Yeah, dude. Okay. I'm in the motorhome and I'm in the RV. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I just came off a train like a pro challenge where I, I trained 20 hours a week, uh, for three weeks while trying to maintain my day job and my marriage and my sanity and make a video every single day. So, um, I got to give the wife a, like, a little bit of a you know <laughs> break and so we, we came down to san diego we're hanging out in the rv and we're literally right next to some train tracks but anyway so okay i want to break this into um brands and and the power of influencers and then also touch on how you can get sponsored like what what is the new world of sponsorship look like and what is that relationship because it's totally different uh and so to to back you up if if all you heard was the vegan cyclist, you're like, this guy's a douche canoe. Uh, <laughs> but I, it's not. My background is that I ran a motorcycle shop from 2004 to 2008. So uh, I was in the industry, like working with Parts Unlimited and, you know, Western Power Sports and just the whole thing. I was super in the industry. I lost that business and kind of didn't I lost my way for so long. I just went through a lot of different uh, business ventures, um, trying to just make money without having to go clock in at a desk. And so just through that, uh, like, I don't really want to work. I, I, you know, I don't like working is how can I make money without having to do that? And so that's sort of gotten me into this position where I have a, a lot of experience with dealing with, um, how to obtain sponsorships, how to make those relationships, uh, profitable for both parties. And so, um, you know, not that I'm like, again, some super athlete that's signed million dollar contracts, but I think the principles are all the same. Um, and so, you know, I just want to share, share a little bit of that with you, because I think that what's interesting is I am a nobody special, right? I am not at all on the class of a, a world athlete. Uh, but, and, and, I don't want to come across douchey or like braggadocious. Uh, but so some of the things I'm going to say is it feels like I'm flexing, but I just want to be open and honest. Right? Yeah, for sure. And so uh, I had gotten one of my first sponsorships was through Diamondback. Uh, they're a bicycle company. And I had a significantly better deal than the top pro athletes on the rally cycling team that was sponsored by them. Yeah. Right. And so I was getting Oh, not unlimited free bikes, but it wasn't even a conversation of, of paying for a bike. And I got several bikes, but, and those pro athletes that that wasn't even their deal, right? They were getting like loaners and then got discounts on other bikes. Right. And so it was so strange to, th- to think there was this one guy who was like in the tour of California c- crushing. And I had a better sponsorship deal than he did. And so, you know, that's just, comes to what is what is a brand looking for when they're trying to get in uh it, it, with a relationship with an athlete and and just before the podcast we had kind of talked about like the days of just being badass is sort of over yeah right i mean you have to be very badass to to obtain some serious sponsorships without um broadcasting yourself or or developing a platform and you know, I know that it's easy sometimes for big athletes to just like have a lot of followers, 
But how about those guys that aren't Ken Roxon, that right. aren't Eli Tomac, you know, that are just off the bubble, right? Um, AJ Catanzaro is like, I think a really good example of a guy who's just like right there. A, you know, he makes the night show sometimes, doesn't others, but he is he has pivoted into having a really popular YouTube channel. And uh, he does a lot of other things, right, to add value to his brand right. versus just like, hey, I'm going to show up and, you know, go double, double, double while Ken Roxon goes. Yeah. Quad, well, single, just you before know? you came on, um, we we recorded a podcast with with Chris Kiefer and we were talking about the opportunities that he and now his son have and how he makes a living it's like the dream job for any motorcycle enthusiast the guy gets paid money to ride motorcycles and talk about how he felt on that motorcycle or how he felt in this fly gear and how he's trying to educate his son on the opportunities that are now available to an athlete more than just going out and winning Loretta's and then moving to the lights and then moving to the big class and it's not all results it's it's a matter of a lot of the times it's content creation in a form that the sponsor deems valuable and I think that's where there's a massive misconception in the sport primarily with amateur athletes but I've seen emails two sponsors from pro athletes to where essentially, and I'm not kidding, some of them have been along the lines of, hey, I race, give me free stuff. And there are typos. It's it's very much, you owe me. I'm at these races. Please send me this. How can I get sponsored? How can I get free stuff? It's never a partnership type of a conversation. It's never, here's what I can do for you. Here's the data that backs up. I can help you what can we do that's mutually beneficial? And I feel like that's always been your approach to where you, you did a video recently about going back and forth with a tire sponsor and you approached it from a way that my company, a, a marketing company would look at as content creation. They're essentially sponsoring you potentially to create content that they can then repurpose and use. I think things like that people just don't think about. So, um, yeah, I don't know where I'm going. That there's so much to talk about. What What are well, your so, thoughts well, on so, all this? Yeah. Okay. So, so in when I was talking about this tire sponsorship, right? I I, I definitely tried to sh talk about what value I was going to bring. So, since I don't, I can't email someone and go, "Hey, uh, I've won Loretta's five times in a row," or or take it to cycling. Hey, I'm I'm on the Tour de France. I I don't have that. And so what can I email a sponsor that is going to to perk their interest? And so, I mean, let's just sort of break it down back to like the brand. Yes. Right. Influencers are becoming the the number one uh, return on investment uh, for a sponsorship, given that you're in the right bubble. There's there's a window. And so the window is if you have 100 followers, you know what I mean? How there's there's not a whole lot um, of reward, no matter what the risk is. Even if risk is just a discount, it's just like it's there. That's not. It's going to be difficult for you to obtain really anything of value with, you know, a hundred people and, and maybe your engagements low. But then you have someone who might have millions of followers, and now yeah, you have a ton of followers, uh, and a brand might go, oh man, if we could just get Axel Hodges to like you know, hold up our coffee for a second, but that is now a massive risk because he's going to require so much money. Mm -hmm. And then he's not really invested in your company. Like he doesn't care. You know what I mean? He's get, he has a lot of opportunities. So then that's, that's overbaked. You know what I mean? You got, you got your undercooked and you're overcooked. And so you got to find the influencers that are in between a, a thousand followers to maybe a hundred thousand followers you know, right around there, that's the sweet spot for a brand. And so when I owned my motorcycle shop and I had to do traditional radio, I did these coupons. Uh, I printed these coupons and I mailed them out. And, and the guy who was like the rep for it, you know, had all these analytics. Okay, well, these are the zip codes and this is the demographic and, you know, this is where it's going. And he hyped me up so much. I think I put $5,000 into these mail-in coupons. I got one of those coupons back to me and then the person didn't even buy anything they mm -hmm. came into the shop and was like oh i have this coupon they looked around and they left and it was like what a waste of money right but you have real 
traditionally you have real no way to to know what demographic you're hitting. So when you're talking about an influencer, they've already scrubbed the emails, right? They've already scrubbed uh, the demographic. They have, for the most part, everyone that you're trying to target. And so that becomes this, I, I mean, for your marketing agency, right? What would you pay? W- would you rather have a million emails that are random and this email list has been sold off a hundred times and and you have no idea if any of these emails are real or not but there's value in quantity Mm -hmm. or would you rather have a hundred emails that are a warm handshake that that have been vetted that you know when you will you spend the time and energy to send out an email campaign to them that they're actually interested in what you're saying right yeah i mean we we have a client that has you know a few thousand emails they sent out three emails and they generated thirty five thousand dollars in sales because those few thousand emails were quality they were engaged with the brand as opposed to it's the same thing as likes on facebook like i think this day's passed but so many people used to just want thousands and thousands and thousands of likes well would you rather have 1200 or uh, 120,000 likes that don't really do anything for you would you rather have a thousand real fans that engage with your brand and are going to actually take action and and, and do something obviously you'd want the 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 smaller quality uh, rather than the larger quantity that doesn't do anything for you right and so I think a lot of people don't realize their value because they haven't been on the traditional side of marketing where it's like, okay, you're going to run a TV ad and you're going to get 10,000 views and you have no idea who just saw, you know, you might be, you might be paying to have a 75 year old grandma while she's watching wheel of fortune, see your motorcycle ad. And I'm not saying 75 year old grandmas can't rip and shred, but (laughs) you know, is that who you want to keep broadcasting to? You just don't really know. And so honestly, someone who has a thousand followers and is authentic, that is of huge value. And so when a brand looks at someone like that and sends them say one set of gear for free, that person with a thousand followers, one stoked. And so then now they're going to start, you know, talking about it in an authentic way. And we're going to get into how to be authentic and not be gross. Uh, but that brand, right, as as someone who has contributed to that, you might see 10 sets of gear sold, maybe 20 sets of gear sold. So what's the return on investment? One free set of gear versus, you know, you returned back 10 to 20 sets. Right. Like that's 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 the best ROI you can get. Now, obviously, the scale isn't very big, right? I mean, you, you're going to have to have lots of influencers, you know, to, if you're trying to say, well, how do we generate a million dollars in sales? Like, but I'm saying the the quality of when you're talking with with good influencers. Yeah. It's just unmatched by any other way. And so it goes back to your Diamondback sponsorship, too, though. I mean, like, so you talked about, you know, there's me and I have the sponsorship that's better than this this pro level cyclist. Well, for those listening that haven't added it up, it's because Diamondback saw more value in what Tyler was doing to where his content was generating a better ROI than this pro level cyclist. So it's not necessarily in this sport. It's not necessarily win on Saturday or Sunday, sell on Monday, like it quite to the level that it used to be. When you have people like Tyler that are creating content that is driving a reaction from the content and and generating sales, there's more value in that than necessarily always being a pro level athlete. Well, I mean, take Geico, for example, right? How many, how many fans do you think know what geico is right if if you if you didn't weren't really into tv and you were like a younger generation and, you, and you're not super into insurance right. right uh if you just go to the motorcycle race and you see geico honda do you automatically go you know what i need some good insurance yeah like no it's just a name right, right. that that and it's how much money are they spending on having their name on the side of a motorcycle and and obviously you can see like that gets pulled out and then you know it's game over because of how much money they've invested in the whole program but i'm just saying like uh a sticker or a name on the side of of 
your bike or on your helmet. Yeah. It's that's that's not the point. That's not the that's not the value. So sometimes people go, hey, I'll throw your logo on my bike and I'll go ride around in seventh at my local Friday nights track. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, what value? <laughs> that's no value. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just it, it doesn't matter. There is a, a huge Alpacin is a, a shampoo company and they sponsor uh, a huge world tour team and they have Matthew Vanderpool, who's like maybe one of the greatest cyclists ever at the moment he is insane world champion uh in cyclocross i had someone message me and go i'm a huge fan i didn't know what alpacin was mm -hmm. until you talked about it in your video i had no i idea. actually didn't know it was shampoo yeah i right i agree i'm in the same so, boat i see i i know who matthew vanderpool is i didn't even connect it oh that that's that's on his jersey i know it because of your 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 content that's funny right and so it's the the logo like place logo here i mean there is importance and value to brand awareness obviously but what what seems to be missing in the industry is that connection between the brand awareness and and, and branding a logo and a name and then what the hell it is you do and so uh you, the influence the power of influencers is is insane Mm -hmm. and uh, the return on investment is insane. And I think that already a lot of companies and a lot of sponsors that I've talked to, 100% of their business model is influencers, right? So I, I talked to a nutrition company and that's it. No traditional marketing whatsoever. It's just, let's get this product in the hands of people that are going to talk about it authentically and actually use it. And that's how we'll generate business. Now, Again, like I said, the scalability of how do you take how do you take influencer marketing and then really ramp it up to to, to being yeah. millions of dollars a year? Like, I, I don't have an answer to that. But so when a when a brand is looking at an influencer, I think that there's great value. But now, so let's switch it to as a sponsor as a as an athlete that you're trying to get sponsored before we go into the athlete. I want to, I want to one more quick note that backs you up on, on the brand side. I want to take a quick break and then we'll come back. But on that, your last video, it was cold. You put a pair of gloves on that I didn't know existed from a brand called Velo toes. And I was like, I need those. I literally turned around. I paused your video. I went and I bought the $50 pair of gloves. I came back and finished the video. That is what Tyler's talking about when it is, a brand working with an influencer that people know, like, and trust. I know Tyler. I trust that when he says these are awesome, he's doing it in an authentic, genuine way. I don't even know if he's sponsored by Velotoes or if he just likes their product, but I turned well, yeah, around so and I bought it. I, I didn't do a an ad. No. It wasn't like, okay, I didn't stop the video and go, well, I need to talk to you about the wonderful power of Velotoes gloves. Yeah. Like that, you would have been skip, skip, skip. Yeah. Uh, and so it was just already a part of my natural exactly uh video and to be honest to dive into that a little bit more um i, I had met the velo toes guys at sea otter like three years ago and we've sort of had a uh a real loose relationship just basically product um but with no expectation whatsoever like never did they say hey we need you to talk about these new gloves we're sending out um it was just hey we have these new gloves I think you'd like them. They sent them to me last year and I, and I only just now started using them cause it's getting cold. And so then, uh, sometimes you kind of have to sit on that a little bit as a brand mm -hmm. and it can get frustrating where it's like, Hey, I sent this guy these, you know, some product and he hasn't talked about it yet. Um, but how does that, how does that develop over time? And if you're a brand and go, Hey, we sent you these products, we need you to talk about this right now. Yep. It's going to, it's going to come off forced. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if they sent, cause they sent me the, the gloves in summer. So what am I supposed to do? Be like, I know it's 110, get yourself some thermal gloves, yeah. <laughs> you know, like that doesn't make any sense. Right. And so that's awesome to hear that. Like, yeah, it was like, it was kind of a, uh, a long baked sale for Velo toes, yeah. but it worked a sale 
Exactly. Nevertheless. Hey, when we come back, there's there again, there's so much to dive into this. Tyler is is a master at this. He's literally found a way to make it his living. Um, we're going to dive into the writer side of it. What can you as a writer do? How can you approach sponsors? What do you need to understand? What do some of you need to get through your thick, stubborn skulls that it's going to be required it's not just, I race these eight events a year, give me free stuff. Tyler's going to talk about that when we come back. Hey, I want to tell you about our friends at Flex Racing. Flex Racing is a one-stop shop for all custom designs and products that you need to look good at the racetrack. Flex creates some of the most stunning and custom race day materials available today. Designing and manufacturing products that help you represent your team and your sponsors. Products like custom pop-up tents, table covers, chairs, umbrellas, bike graphics, bike mats, even gear bags. And I'm telling you, the gear bags, they're sick. We're going to get some made for Impact and our EMTB team. They're awesome. If you need your name or your logo on it, chances are these guys can take care of it for you. Flex also provides rider and team logos, truck and trailer wrap designs, custom t-shirts, and even jackets. Not only are the designs killer, but my favorite thing, the prices. Right? They care about giving you the best possible price because Flex is entirely made up of riders and racers. They understand how expensive it is to look good and to be professional. So they've tailored the prices on all the products to be as affordable as possible to help privateers, big teams, small teams, everybody in between save the money that you guys need for things like travel, race fees, food, etc. They simply get it, right? Flex Racing's motto is secure the vision. They know that greatness exists in all of us and they're here to help us bridge the gap between our vision and our reality. So maybe it's time to replace your pop-up from last season or you need some fresh new gear or maybe even need to replace those graphics on your bike to display your team logo. Give my friends at Flex Racing a shot. You can check them out at flexracing.com. Let them know that Impact sent you. Let them know that you listen to the Moto Marketing Podcast and you can save 15%. Hey, big shout out to our friends at FMF. Uh, Little D and the guys are always doing some pretty exciting things, not just with the performance products, but man, they've got the coolest apparel in the game. And I want to give you guys an opportunity to get that at a little bit of a discount. If you go to FMF and, and, and pick up any gear you'd like, hats, shirts, whatever it is, upon checkout, if you enter the code MMP30, MMP30, you can get 30% off. So M M P three zero at checkout and get 30% off your order on FMF apparel. All right, guys, welcome back. We got Tyler Pierce, the vegan cyclist. If you haven't checked his stuff out on, uh, on YouTube, check it out. He, he alluded to it at the beginning. It's not a channel devoted to getting you to become a vegan. In fact, it's the furthest thing from that. Um, it is the raddest content and it crosses over. There's a ton of moto guys that follow Tyler. Uh, you've actually become really good friends with AJ Canton Zaro. Um, so check his content out. And again, what we're talking about today stems from some of the content that he's put out there. So the writer side of it, you approach the relationship with a brand more like a marketing company than a athlete that thinks he's the shit that needs free stuff and is expecting that from a brand. Let's walk our listeners through. Well, so that and, and one thing I think might be of a value is that you, not everyone has that spark of a marketer. And so if you're a really high level moto dude, you might be a high level moto dude because you're not very good at anything else, right? <laughs> like if you can, if you can blitz the whoops, fourth gear tap, right? Or if just dude, making the night show takes a crazy amount of dedication and hyper focus. And so, you know, looking at uh, Adam Cincerolio, like when he was trying to daily vlog or he was doing some vlogs, I thought like, dude, that's so cool. That's so neat that he's trying to do that. But he had to make a decision. I have to fully focus on this. I cannot do these. Uh, No matter if it seems dumb or easy to do, I'm 100% focused on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, if you're not good at making a pitch, hire somebody. There are tons of companies will take a, a, a percentage off of the top to sort of be your your manager. Right. Um, So there's a lot of companies out there that will say, hey, we'll go approach the companies for you and we'll pitch you as a brand, because if you're not a brand manager and you send an email with typos and go, I like to ride, send me stuff that's not going to get anywhere. And then you're going to feel frustrated 
And sometimes, you know, it's just not your job. It's not your job to do that. So personally, I kind of, that is a skill set that I, that I have. And so I'm, I'm fortunate in that way that I'm able to create PDFs. So the way that I, I've pitched projects and, and sponsorship is not just in a general email. Uh, I will design something that has images, um, you know, video statistics, analytics, a breakdown, a timeline, right? So I give the sponsor zero questions because as soon as a sponsor has a question, they might go, well, can you send me something else? Can you, they push it back in your court and then it just sort of doesn't go anywhere, right? Uh, don't expect the sponsor to look you up, even if you're awesome, right? Even if you have, you know, you have done all these amazing things, you need to display that in a very easy and digestible way because you might, one, do you have the right contact, right? So if you don't have the right contact and you send your amazing proposal to the secretary, like, how is that? it's not even going to go anywhere potentially. Right. So you need to have something that is easily passable. So if the secretary gets it and it's like, well, I'm not going to waste the owner's time with sending this over to them. Right. So developing some kind of package of what it is that you're going to get. So that is, what have you done already? What are you going to do? And what are your deliverables? Yeah. So the word deliverables has become I think really popular in the last couple of years, every sponsor that I've worked with, they want to know what are we getting and what do you want? Yeah. And so here are my deliverables. There's going to be three Instagram story slides. There's going to be two Instagram posts and there's going to be uh, a one to two minute mention in this video. Here's the breakdown of the history. Uh, my stories get 10,000 views. My post gets 30,000 views, my, uh, my video might get 20 to 30,000 views. So that equals to around maybe 20 to 30,000 unique eyeballs. Just presenting that you can, you can break down the math and show them and it be a no brainer to yeah. that brand. Yeah. Real quick. You, you'd mentioned, you know, finding the right contact. And, and I've had people ask me in the past, like, how do you, how do I find that contact? And we use it from the standpoint of, look, we're pitching and selling brands to work with us for their digital marketing. I've got to get to the right person. A little pro tip for this industry, your contact more often than not has been on a podcast. So my example, we work with seven. Well, I obviously didn't call James Stewart and say, Hey man, here's what we can do for you. I listened to Dennis Block, who's the COO of Seven, on a podcast, and I realized he's my guy. That's all I needed. I needed the guy's name and the position. If you know that Dennis Block, the COO of Seven, is your guy, you can start reaching out to him. Where? Well, he's probably on LinkedIn. Probably has an Instagram account. He probably has a Twitter account. He might be on Facebook. You don't just have to get an email, or if it is, an email. It's much easier to find it if you know who you're looking for, as opposed to you have no idea who the owner is. So I'm not saying go hit up Dennis Block, but that is a success story that Seven is one of our our favorite clients that we have. And the only reason we have him is because I found him through being a guest on a podcast that I listened to. And I said, there's my guy. So if you're needing that contact, use that because I'm telling you, it, it does work very well. Well, I'm going to hit him up, dude, because I love Seven. Seven's awesome. I, I thought about second... hitting him up for you because you and your boy always wear it. I'm like, I got to call De- well, Dennis and, and tell him so to send Tyler some As stuff. soon as I saw Seven uh, hit hit like the industry, I was like, bro, that is that is so awesome. <laughs> because the bagginess, like it was the first brand, clothing brand to yep. really do something different. Yep. And uh, I he mean, talked about I was that just... on the show was he, he, we had him on a few weeks ago and that's what he talked about was that, that more form fitting cycling type fit, but they were the first movers to do it. It's pretty neat. Well, and so to, to go back to influencers, where did I see seven that I thought I would like it was Alex mm-hmm. or Axel, sorry, uh, Axel Hodges. Right. So when I saw, when I saw Stuart running it, it's like, Oh, that's sick, but I'm not Stuart. So am I going to look stupid if I run up, if I go to the track in seven gear and I'm throwing the biggest butt scrub you've ever seen, <laughs> like I, I kind of felt stupid to run that. But when I saw Axel running it and 
I was like, man, he looks so sick in it. And so then I, and then I started seeing like a handful of other people at the track. Cause you sort of have to get the party started if you will. Right. Like, so I didn't want to be the first one, the trendsetter. Uh, but once I saw a couple of people rocking it, I was like, Oh, I'm all in. Yeah. I mean, I dude, yeah. the gear's so dumb, yeah, but it is. it's sick. But so also perseverance is, yeah, I did a video about how to become an okay cyclist. And this just is in general of, of everything in life consistency. I have tried to get a deal with Oakley for two years and I have crushed. Uh, I did a video where I did sunglass breakdown um, of that and it did like 200,000 views. I mean, just, I had a great track record. Uh, I put together an amazing proposal. Um, I, I showed just basically that I had reached like a million eyeballs for Oakley and they didn't even know, mm -hmm. right? And they didn't even know I was doing that. I just love the company. I love the, the, the sutros. And so I, man, I was hitting down every door I could possibly hit down. And I, I finally got someone to give me the email from the guy that I needed. And I emailed him 10 times before he responded. Yeah. And so I know that seems like real spammy, but you're, these people aren't in the business of giving away free product. They're in the business of selling product. So if you keep going, Hey, I want free product. That is so low on the totem pole. They're not like, Oh, I got to get back to this guy right away. Mm -hmm. So no matter what your proposal is and how awesome you think you are and what you've done in the past, sometimes you just got to knock on that door a lot of times. Yeah. And then finally, when he emailed back, he was like, Hey man, I'm really sorry. This got buried. You know, here's why I didn't get back to you, but I'm back to you now. Let's go forward. And it's like, yes, dude. Yep. Uh, and so, you know, like it's just that perseverance of just continuing to get like, there's a saying like get your 99 slaps. Like if you're at a bar, you're trying to, trying to, to take a lady home, get slapped 99 times, like that hundredth one, like, you know, like right. you just get, get the nose, yeah, get yeah. the nose out of the way. Um, and don't take it too personally, like try to, and this is very difficult for people who are trying to get sponsored. Uh, if they go and go, if they go to a sponsor and go, Hey, can you sponsor me? And the sponsor goes, I'll give you 10% off. You might feel, well, huh, what didn't, don't you know that I'm so great? Don't you know that I did this and I did, maybe they didn't know. Maybe you didn't do a good enough, good enough job of selling yourself. Yeah. And so let's get a little bit into now you've obtained the sponsor, right? So I guess I'll back up just a little bit is that you need to, you need to have proof of concept. And so um, if you are a, a, a young buck, you're new, you've raced twice. What, what have you done? And your Instagram has one, one video of you like tail whipping a scooter. Like you need to build that before you ask for support. Right. Cause then you can go back and say, I have done all of this without support. Imagine what I can do with support. Yeah. So um, the the greatest project that I've ever been a part of is is called the Impossible Route, the world's biggest climb, uh, is where myself and Jeremiah Bishop rode gravel bikes up Mauna Kea, the largest volcano in the world. Uh, we were the first two people to ever do this route, and. I sunk my soul into this project in hopes that I could, I could use that as a platform to show what I'm capable of. Now I had to invest my own money and my own time and really sort of invest in myself. But now that is a portfolio piece of mine that is so powerful. And so when I'm talking, when I was talking to IRC, uh, about getting a tire sponsorship for the next set of these projects. It's not, Hey, if you sponsor me, imagine what I can do for you. Mm -hmm. It is. If you sponsor me and you get on this project, look at mm -hmm. what you're going to be involved with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that is, that is something I think that the young bucks or anyone needs to understand is that your ideas or your I'm gonna's right. That's not, there's no value to that no. whatsoever do something and say, I can replicate this for you. So when I go and I talk to brands, um, 
so the, like this Jaybird, I'm using these ear earbuds. When I was talking with them, I had already done some stuff about headphones. And so I sent them, I said, this is what I've done in this space. So if you work with me, this is roughly what you are going to expect. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, that's huge. Right. Um, but so once you have uh, done something of value, right. And you found the right contact and you've put together your proposal um, on who you are, what you do, what you're going to do, what you have done and what you're going to deliver. Like, like it, when, when I pitch a company, it is, this is what I'm going to do and, and deliver. And this is what I need. Like so straightforward, right? So there's no amb ambiguity to it. Um, and so I go, okay, I'm going to deliver these Instagram posts, uh, this Instagram story. I'm going to deliver this video. Um, and it's going to be in this time frame. And this is what I need to get that done. And if that's product, if that's cash, I also pitch a, a good, better, best, right? So just like business kind of one-on-one is when you pitch someone to give them options right. is always good. So I will say if it's product only, like we're just talking, you're just going to send me product. The deliverables look definitely different and the time frame looks different. And as the channel has grown and there's become more value to the audience for, for my audience, it's if you just send product only, I, maybe, maybe it gets in a video like the Velo Toes, like they, that, that wasn't a paid thing. It was like, if you send me this and I use it and I like it, maybe in some video it will pop up and it will deliver value, right? Um, You've also then, earned the right to a approach it that way too. I think I want people to understand that. Tyler has got some serious clout now that he didn't have when he's in a lot of your all's positions. So I wouldn't suggest reaching out to a sponsor and saying, Hey, I got six Instagram followers. I want 20 grand a year. If you send me some product, I might, I a hundred percent agree with what you're saying, but well, I think, well, but so, you, but so yeah, it that. would have to be like, it's yes, all relative, right? Exactly. But it would be scaled. Like if you have, if you don't have much of an audience, you would say for sure. Um, if you send me, if you give me a 10% off discount, um, you know, maybe we can open up the relationship and these are the things that I would hope to do later. Yep. Right. So developing trust in a company. So not just going straight for the moon and being like, I want you to pay me every month to, to yeah. be a brand ambassador. Um, potentially you should already have supported that company. Yeah. So almost every company that I have worked with, I am already a user of that company um and so like with oakley i already had those shades you know what i mean i it wasn't like hey i've never ran your product before please send it to me and, and i'll put your name on the map yeah like that's not how that's not how it works anymore and what a better pitch to to go to seven and be like hey i've bought five sets of gear and i've done this actually uh what did i i think it was a drone company that i was talking with and I said, I are, I bought your drone and I have already, here's, here's the names and the Instagrams of the people who purchased a drone because I was using it. Yeah. And so already your return on investment yeah. is massive. Yeah. Right. And so I, I can say, I can actually line out a budget. Right. You have made roughly $7,000. What if you sent me another drone or your, your, your better drone? I'm, you're already in the green, you know what I mean? And so to kind of, Anyway, I'm just saying. Yeah. You definitely well, to back you up them. on 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 what you're saying, just to kind of give everybody another story that that solidifies what you're going at as well. So everybody knows I put together this this EMTB team that races in the GNCC circuit. Well, last year was the concept year, and I sunk a ton of my own money into it. Um, I I was the only paid sponsor. I approached Specialized because I found the contact. I made a relationship with this gentleman, and I said, look send me a bike that I will send back to you. Let me create content through the year on how we use this bike as a training tool and, and use it as a proof of concept that we can help you guys with content creation and, and provide value in hopes that I built enough rapport that in 2021, I could approach them for more. Long story short, they sold at least 15 e-bikes through our team, through the local bike shop in Morgantown, West Virginia, which is Wamsley Cycles. 
we tracked back and the people that were coming to us uh, on, on, on our videos that we created or coming up to us at the races or going to the bike shop and saying, hey, I'm you know following the team, whatever it is. At the end of the year, they essentially just said, hey, keep that bike, do what you want with it, sell it, use the money for the team, whatever. And also, we're going to bring you on and help support you for next year because I, I made that risk. Now, yes, I had to talk them into sending me a $9,000 bike, but I was going to send it back to them. And they were essentially using it as marketing material. But I mean, our some of our clients will pay us two to $10,000 a month to do that. So I went out on a limb and said, let me do this for free for you in hopes that I can show them enough value that they want to stick around and do something next year. And long story short, I did exactly what Tyler said. And they have stuck around. They are supporting us next year. But I had to, you know, I had to show up first. I couldn't just expect them to want to work with me because I'm Luke Nestler. I'm nobody to them. Um, and I had to prove myself. And that's what you're talking about, Tyler. Well, and so your pitch is a very low risk, high reward yes. for that Great brand. Yep. And, and and just at any time that you can offer up a low risk, high reward, it's going to have a better chance of, of landing. And so, again, what I try to do is is also structure something that's going to have longevity. Uh, and so the life of a relationship, it, it matters a lot. So when I when I do a video, a standalone video for a brand or, or something, when the brand stops the relationship with me, they're continuing to to generate revenue off that. Mm. I did um, a video about setting up my pain cave uh, and, and I had gotten this one trainer that, you know, they gave me a trainer it was 600 bucks. So to them, I think it was like a $300 investment to me. That video dude almost has a million views and they have sold over a hundred trainers through that video. Now, I should have set up some sort of affiliate link. I should have done something, but at the time I wasn't, I didn't have that kind of power. Yeah. And so just getting a free trainer uh, just alone was like, wow, this is awesome. Um, but they, well, I don't have a relationship with them anymore. That video is still generating sales every month for them. Mm -hmm. And so to try to structure in what you're offering longevity, right? Uh, I, I think that, that that helps. Like time, when you look at business-wise, if you say, well, if you give me this, what are you going to return on in 30 days? That's sometimes very difficult to quantify. Yeah. If you send me this product, what are you going to generate over a year, over two years, over three years? Uh, but those deliverables have to have some sort of life. Yeah. So if you go, all I do is Instagram story and it's only 24 hours. Well, the life to that content, you know, isn't, isn't super great. Yeah. And so also I think we kind of touched on this in the very beginning is content creation. So you have, you have sort of two things as a brand ambassador that are of value is your platform or your audience. Okay. And then the creation of that content. And so um, I, ha I have a clothing brand that I've started a couple years ago. And it's so it's interesting because I'm seeing it from the other side. I need photos of people in my casual wear that aren't me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I need that. I need good content. And so even though I would say that I am I'm very adept at uh, content creation, I need someone else to do that because right. it can't just always be me. So trying to find someone to create content, that is of such a huge value to me that if someone created a little 30 second Instagram story of, of them with, with my clothes or I, I would be over the moon. Like that is, that is worth thousands of dollars because I'm not having to do it. Right. And, and if you were going to get a team, you know, I mean, if you, I don't know if you guys have ever put together like full on tv ads or or any like standalone content for brands that costs money yeah that costs money for the team to do it for the editing for everything and so when you are an influencer and you offer a platform and you're going to create content so uh often i will try to separate what i'm going to post and then just hey here's here's like a handful of pictures that you can do whatever you want with or here's this video you do whatever you, I'm not going to post it. Cause a lot of time when you create content, you have so much 
and then it all gets funneled down, right? So knowing the value of what you offer as as an athlete, as an influencer is is huge. So if you're a motocross guy and, you know, uh, I'm sure that you probably have a couple photos of you blowing out a berm somewhere. That is if if you've got a logo somewhere or you're running the tires or you're running the helmet, that's a really high value to that brand. And so offering up free use to that, right? So getting the the photographer to release that or you own that or whatever the case saying, hey, I'm going to post this on my uh, my platform and, you know, you get that value. But here's here's a handful of other photos that I can't use right? Um, that you can. Well, so you talk about that in, in, again, one of your recent videos, and I don't know if it was about IRC. It was in the same video, but you talk about this this smoking deal, as you put it, that uh, a brand is essentially getting from you because they're offering you, in this case, monetary support, but what they're getting in return is something so valuable that they they eventually or essentially would have to come to a company like myself to or hire some type of a production house to go out and create all this content to where you guys on this 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 adventure journey that you're going to be doing next year you're going to be creating all this content that they can put in the can and utilize so you're approaching that deal essentially the way that an ad agency would more than how a lot of these people listening, I think are, are thinking a sponsored writer would to talk on that. Cause I was very intrigued by the fact that you're approaching yes, them okay, as, Hey, so, I can give you this production in exchange. Yeah, so, so, um, I did the impossible route and it was semi sponsored by Canyon. Like they, they were willing to cover a little bit of traveling costs. Like that was it. And so I still had to do 110 hours of editing in this thing. Um, I had to manage the whole project. It was massive. And so once I, once I launched it uh, and Canyon saw such a crazy return and, and just the quality, they came back and said, we want four of these next year, right? So then they, they went from, hey, we'll cover some traveling costs to like, we're gonna be the title sponsor on four of these. And so then, um, we have to figure out how to com- complete that budget. So now we need some other supporting sponsors uh, for the other projects. So now we've been hitting up some companies to try to uh, to pitch, you know, being a sponsor. But it is very expensive. Uh, this this project's going to take a hundred grand because it's four videos. Anyways, there's a lot of travel. There's there's a lot going on with it. And so when I went to IRC, my pitch isn't. Hey, I'm going to throw a logo on the opening screen and that's it. Now give me $15,000. It is not only are you going to hit these, these platforms, right? So myself, Canyon and Jeremiah are all putting out these uh, pieces of content. So you have that, but we are going to be filming with a red camera, right? Like, Like the highest in cameras. We've got a still photographer. We already have a crew. We already have the locations. We're already going to be there. And so what I said is you can send me a shot list uh, and say, hey, we want um, a, a 240 frames per second slow-mo of our tires rolling over uh, some gravel, right? We're already going to be there doing it and we're already going to be filming. So now I can um, deliver a, a more value out of just, hey, these are going to be dope videos, but like we'll be your content creation crew for this for this year and so you know do you want a a a video of us riding through the tetons through the desert through the swamps through alaska that's what i pitched and so even if even if you didn't care about the platform and what views we were going to get the simple value of content creation i i and that's what i pitched it more to is because there's a a, an instant value or, or dollar amount so if if I say, hey, what would it cost you to send some guys, a film crew to the Tetons and get some shots? Probably 15 grand. Yeah. So when when I say I'm asking 15 grand for an entire year uh, and that covers four projects and all this um, you know, audience, but also you're going to get access to 10 terabytes of footage. And, you know, one of the things we're doing for Canyon that I can also potentially do for for IRC or any other sponsor is we're chunking up the content 
and delivering it as like a corporate, hey, this is just for you. Yeah. This is just Canyon content. So yeah, I've got an hour long documentary on my right. channel, but here's a little five minute Instagram IGTV just for Canyon. Yeah. And the value of that is serious. So let me break that down in a way that maybe Sammy in Georgia, who is an amateur athlete looking to get support, doesn't have a red. And if you don't know what a red is, it is a six figure camera, very expensive. If he doesn't have that, he doesn't have a crew. What does Sammy have that you can replicate Tyler's model and do something at whatever you get the local Chevy dealership to help you out with a van and you showcase that van. How can you do that? Well, number one, you have your phone. They shoot in 4k. Number two, GoPros are sick. Now, um, you can get, you know, Sony G seven X's for 750 bucks on Amazon. You can get access to something that creates really quality content and Tyler's pitch, I think, is one of the most powerful ways to spin this for a sponsor because we've done work with, uh, we, you know, one of our longest standing moto clients right now is uh, Factory Effects. And there have been times where they've come to us and they've contemplated having us go to the nationals and shoot the, the pros that are running the Factory Effects graphics. Um, it, it's a very expensive venture for them. So how can you provide that in exchange for whatever the sponsorship is that you're looking for? Um, we're doing that with our e-bike team. Michelin, um, uh, Randy Richardson and Michelin have come on this year, and they're one of our biggest title sponsors, and that's what they're looking for. They're looking for event activation. They're looking for content creation. They're looking to partner with us on this podcast. They're looking for essentially everything except the result. That's great if they get it, but they're looking at it from how can we take advantage of this as a marketing opportunity, not Luke and his team better win every single race because that's what we care about. They care about the content that they're going to get access to to promote their tires. You can do that with a GoPro. You can do exactly well, what Tyler so, just so said. I definitely want to talk a little bit about the tools because it, it paralyzes people sometimes. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't I don't have the right editing software. I don't have the the power to do this. Dude, you have a phone. Yeah. There is so much that you could do with this phone. The new iPhone, I have the iPhone 11. This thing, okay, so I've got a $6,500 Sony S or a Sony um, A7 4R. Uh, it's got this lens on its $2,000. It's so insane. Um, I've got this huge mic. The ease of using that is so difficult and take such a learning curve, like the shots are blurry, out of focus, like the sound is is terrible, you don't know what you're doing, versus my iPhone, dude, is a, you're never going to have a crappy shot with your iPhone. It's going to be totally good enough. Yeah. And so there's marginal gains. I actually did this Instagram story about how to take better uh, pictures. And what was crazy is I put side by side the same shot, one with a GoPro and one with my $6,500 camera i would almost go out to say that gopro looked better it did on right yeah I, for sure it was it was crazy and yeah. so don't paralyze yourself on the quality of that content you you'll get there eventually if you wanted but it's not it's not about that it's about just doing something getting it getting something that is there because brands and i know that sometimes you might feel like oh dude the brand doesn't care about this they don't want to see this uh they don't want to use this they're clamoring for content. Every brand is just, what can we do every day? And, and so, you know, if you can get into a position where you're creating content for a company, you know, that can end up being a full-time job. So like an employee, if you've never hired an employee, it's very difficult to understand. You always just think like uh, that the business owner or the boss has all the power. In my web development company, I have an employee that if she knew her value, like she could come to me tomorrow and say, I want, I want a triple raise. I would be like, I, I have, okay, yeah. <laughs> you're too valuable, right? Like she is so valuable. And so uh, the, the, the amount of money that I have to put out to have one employee on the books versus what would I, what could I get if I paid, you know, a local little young buck who's good on TikTok, $500 a month. I could, I could get so much. I could get almost the same of a full-on employee 
right? And so your value, if you're willing to to take that on, is extremely high. And, and I know that products like because there's discounts, there's product support, and then there's you know getting paid. Um, don't underestimate how much you can get paid from a company if you're if you've built something. Yeah. And and obviously you might need to start low. I you know the first time that I ever got a sponsorship request on my channel, it was like, hey, we'll we'll I think it was like we'll send you this at a fifty percent discount. And I was like, what? You know, fifty percent <laughs> discount, sweet. And then I go and I bust my ass to make this piece of content. You know what I mean? And then they sell so much. And so, um, you know, over time, it's like I, I kind of started to to see what that value was. But uh, I, I want to talk about because I know we kind of need to wrap it up here. But let's let's talk about being gross and how to yeah. be an influencer. I think actually. that's powerful. I, you, you touched on that a good bit in your video and that resonated with me. So let's let's dive into the authentic aspect of. And it's your example of the Velo toes. You weren't like, here are these awesome Velo toes gloves. It, the way you did it was very organic. I, you build that trust with me, I go out and buy it. So go ahead. Well, so the trust is extremely important. And you want to have your morals and your values set pretty in stone before you ever start to go out there. Uh, when you start pitching yourself, especially if you have never really done this before, you might get really excited to take on a deal that you're going to hate yourself for and it ruins your brand. So if you go out and you say everything is awesome all the time, every post is an ad, everything, you, you've switched CBD companies 10 times, no longer can the person trust you and now your word is of no value. Mm -hmm. And so no matter if you have a million views, maybe you have 10 million views, but everything you do is is sponsored in a gross way. The engagement is trash. And so the brand, you know, if they have any way to uh, track this stuff, like with affiliate links or even just codes, like discount codes, coupon codes, and they start to see nothing come back, mm -hmm. well, that, that brand's not going to renew with you. Uh, and, and the industry's small, man. Word gets around. So when, you know, you've got, you've done a brand dirty, where you said you were gonna do something and you didn't do it or it didn't pan out, you know, that affects you. So from day one, know what you're willing to do uh, for sponsorship. And so personally, I I got into a, a relationship with a company where I, I got a little eager. This was way back in the day. I got real eager. There was a little bit of money on the line and I was like, wow, I've never, I didn't know I could make money on YouTube like this. And but they sent over a script. They sent over all of these deadlines. Like I had to do these things at certain times. I had to release the content at certain times. I no longer owned my voice. Mm -hmm. They owned me. And no matter amount, no, there is no money that's going to make you feel good about that. And uh, I had posted a video is the, the spirulina company. Of, I mean, I still, I was really into it, but still what they wanted me to do. And they put all this pressure on me to get out a video on this one day because they were doing some sort of marketing activation that I, I got a lot of heat for it. People were like, this is gross, man. Like it doesn't, this doesn't feel like you, this feels like an ad. And, and I just, ever since then, I sort of just made this decision. I'm never going to do that again. And I'm going to make a pitch of, Hey, if you want to work with me, you're going to work with me i'm not a an employee of your company I, I am in the business of entertainment and if we can find a mutual beneficial you know beneficial relationship here great but i'm never going to do that again and so the scripts dude you know when someone's saying a script yeah like i, I don't want to talk smack on red bull i love red bull but they they require their athletes once a week to post a picture of them drinking Red Bull and use the phrase, it gives you wings. Yeah. Oh, rock I, stars the same way. And I think it's funny because you're the only person I've heard in the industry give Red Bull heat. Rock star is always the one that gets shit on because if you look at any rock star athlete, every third photo is 
them holding a rock star can and they get shit over it and I get it. I understand why Rockstar and Red Bull do that, but I think where what you're talking about, if, if you're going to build a brand that has influence and gets people to see you wearing a pair of gloves and then they go and buy it, they've got to know, like, and trust you. It can't be, okay, he's promoting this product this week. He doesn't really believe in it. It's just how he's getting paid. I don't give a shit. I'm not going to buy it. Is that is that one of the reasons you were like I'm never doing that again because I'm going to lose the trust I have with my with my audience? Yeah, because once you lose once you lose the trust, it's it's over. It, it, you can't you'll never get it back. And, and you've seen brands do this where they've lost trust and they've had to completely dissolve the company and and go into a different direction because there's yeah. no saving it. Yeah. Um. It's and so what I'm saying is like, don't be gross. It's not good for anyone. So if the brand since and i just had a company uh they sent over um i shouldn't put them on blast but anyway it was they so they sent over this hey this is what we'll pay you for this amount of money and here's the script and here's the timeline like they were very clear this is this is the deal and i wrote back and i countered the proposal and i said actually you know, I, I don't think it's going to be good for you guys uh, it's just not going to come across well the engagement's going to be terrible plus I don't do scripts because that's that's lame. Uh, so here's <laughs> here's my counter argument. And I, I listed out actually been a really long time, like half a day on this whole project. It was like a three video thing, like how it was going to be integrated and how it wasn't going to be gross. Like I really thought, how can I talk about this company while still delivering entertainment? Yeah. And you're trying to help them as much as you were yourself. Right. Like you, you right. Know. So I, I I sent this back. And the guy just went, came back and was like, no, we'll stick with the script. And that was it. There was no, like, did you even read? Like, I spent half a day on this, like, proposal uh, of a long-term relationship. Like, a long-term, this is how we're going to do it. And it's going to be way better for you because, one, there'll be longer, you know, more views. And, and but, you know, if I mention a company once, very people, how many people are going to listen to that? The third time the 10th time, the 20th time, right? It's that's when it starts to sink in. And so the guy just wrote back and he was like, no, like, this is not what we do. We do, we burn through influencers is what I heard, mm -hmm. right? Is we send you a script, we pay you one time, we move on to the next influencer. <laughs> We're just burning through these guys. Yeah. And so then it's like, well, dude, I don't want a relationship with a company who one only wants to make one activation. And they're just like, well, We'll do this once with you and see where it goes. No, no, that's not how it's going to work for anyone. I'm going to feel gross. You're not going to really get any sales. You're just, and then, and then I'm getting burned. So you have to stick to your guns and, and just say like, here's, here's the, what the organic bit of this is going to be. Now, there's a lot of times where I have tagged companies and I don't, I very rarely talk about them at all, but what ends up happening is people will direct message me and go, hey, I've seen you running this specialized evade helmet. What's your thoughts on that? Right? Because I, I don't think I've ever tagged them or ever, haven't said anything about it at all. Uh, but how many people have reached out directly and said, what are your thoughts? Like that is, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. And there is, there's great value into that. So you don't necessarily have to be like, well, I'm going to go whore myself out for sponsorship. You can just, do what you do with a little bit of extra support and you know make it clean make it good and, and ultimately feel good about yourself because you don't know where it's going to go in the future um in the first three years of youtube i lost money i mean i was just paying money to have to make content right i got no sponsors it was actually at a point around three years where like what am i doing I cannot justify the value of this. Um, and I really had to have this crossroads moment of, do I continue with this? Because this is a, a lost cause. And to me personally, what kept me going is that I, I didn't have this set, here's what I have to do, like what, what success is. I have to have this many views. I got to make this amount of money. It wasn't that. It was, I want to create content that I enjoy personally. Like I want to be able to go back and watch my own videos and go, fuck yeah, dude, this is a good, this is a good video, yeah, <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, and so it, it, but if I was saying 
from the day one, I want to be this high influencer. I want to make all this money. Then you're driven by the wrong success metrics. So, and so as soon as those success metrics dip or aren't what you expect, you're going to quit. Yeah. So to have success, to measure your success on be something that you can control and not what other people can control. I can control the videos I put out. I can't control who watches them or who's trying to sponsor them. So let me just stay my course and do my thing and, and, and sort of put the blinders on, on what everyone else is doing. Let me just do my thing. Uh, race breakdowns. I kind of, you know, it sounds douchey, but sort of pioneered this like power overlay and, and talking about races and, and talking over them. A lot of people jumped on that bandwagon and started doing that. And then there was this one crit race. There was five videos of the same freaking crit race. Hmm. And so it's like, okay, I got to, this is getting <laughs> diluted. Right? right. So how can I, how can I separate myself? And, and you're always trying to evolve as, as an ambassador and you're always trying to um to keep things fresh because what will happen is is potentially you'll get real stagnant uh you know i mean there's there's a lot of i think influencers where you'll see where it's the same thing over and over and yeah. over and over again and so sometimes you need to sort of shift up how you tell that story and so like if you're uh you know whatever willy willy whoops and you're trying to you're trying to to get some support for your moto program because one it's expensive and anything you can do if you like wrote it out on a spreadsheet like what is what are my costs fuel uh track entry uh i've got i've got you know mechanics um spare parts like you write down all these things and um a good way to do sponsorship is to have sectors. Okay. Well, I have my tire sector. I've got my fuel sector. I've got my gear sector. I've got my nutrition sector. And you just list all this out and you start looking at, well, how much money am I spending on just straight up food? Right. And so if you could even get a discount, if you could just get a 30% discount on your, you know, you got Arma there, right? Like your, your Arma nutrition, right? Like yeah. that, that is a value to you. For sure. And so how can you, uh, it's a good place to start is to start looking at how can you reduce your overall cost? Cause that the less you're paying to go do the thing you love to do, yep. it starts to make it be way more enjoyable. Well, that's going I mean, to the moto track and having to spend, you know, when I take my boy, it's like 150 bucks, right. you know, for gas <laughs> entry fee, you know, the time. And so if I had VP as like a sponsor, you know what I mean? Like that would, that would help out so much just For in sure. that one little area. Well, I think it's it's getting started. And I, I, I think the big aha moment that some are going to have with this is looking at, you know, you're, you're, you're a young teenage ripper that you've got, you potentially can make it. Or maybe you've had that realization that you're fast, but you're never going to be a pro. Well, you're young enough now to where if you start and you consistently create content and you get better and better and better at it, you can leverage that skill that you've developed to create a life that long outlives that of a professional supercross or motocross athlete. I go back to Chris Kiefer, who we just had on, uh, whether this show goes out before his or not. He's he's getting paid to do what he loves at an age that you don't see professional supercross and motocross athletes out there, and he's getting paid more money than some of the pros, and he's done it for a longer period of time because he's leveraging his content, he's leveraging his brand, but don't think that it's going to happen tomorrow. That's why if you're a young athlete, if you're a middle-aged athlete, if you start today, today's the day to start because it's you're not going to turn around and go out and get the sponsorships that Tyler's talking about after only doing this for a couple of weeks. It takes yeah, you time gotta to put build it. You got to put in the work and the brands will see that. Yes. And so uh, I, I had there was a local kid at my track and he's just a cool kid. And, and I talked to his dad. And so I gave him um, like a backpack and some stickers and a shirt. I didn't expect anything in return, but they keep tagging me in Instagram posts and and then they uh, took a photo of where my ride bikes bro sticker was like on his back and now I, I keep seeing that and now I feel I want to up my level of involvement with this kid because he's he is creating content yeah. and so now if I had sent him if I gave him a backpack and some stuff and never 
that was it. Like I never saw a tag, you know, no matter how cool this kid is just as a brand, it's, I'm not, I'm not being reminded. Right. And so keep doing it. You know what I mean? Like you got, you got to, if you, if you are say what you're going to do, you got to do what you're going to do. Right. Yeah. So don't, don't tell a sponsor, Hey, I'm going to do these things and then don't fulfill on it. But also just start tagging these companies, even if you're a full on customer, um, because they will see that over time. And then oh, that yeah. might open up a door for you to, to, to potentially have this be a full-time job. Like Kiefer, one, the guy is real. So w when Eli Tomac says that bell helmets are great, yeah, no I, shit. Okay, <laughs> sure. Right. Good. Let's see his paycheck. You know I mean? Yeah. How, how yeah, much, how I mean, much validity just, does that have? Right. For, for one, Eli Tomac's personality is is that of, you know, a uh, bar of soap. Uh, but <laughs> Kiefer, no way. You know, when I see him on the podcasts, uh, you know, it's just like, okay, I trust what this guy says. Exactly. Because he, he's not always politically correct and he's not always like brand um, specific. And I think that that's one real valuable point is that, so I had posted yesterday about my gravel bike. Uh, I didn't say or mention you need to buy a Canyon. I just said, whatever brand of bike you want, you should look in getting a, uh, a gravel bike, right? And so it wasn't this, hey, you have to buy the Canyon Grail. You know, yeah, that's what I'm running. But I just said it is, this is really an amazing tool. You should get yourself a, a, a gravel bike, whatever brand that is. And sometimes people hear that and they, it's not, their guard is down because I'm not going, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. Like you, you have the option. And, um, you know, I think that like with, with Kiefer and, and I can't remember if he's like fully sponsored by Yamaha, but he's ridden a lot of different bikes. And so it's not always this, like, this is the only bike to have. Uh, I, I hear what he's saying and I sort of, I trust it more yeah, because exactly. he isn't this hyper. This is the brand to have. Like right. I, this is what I run. This is what I like, but kind of do whatever you want to do. Yeah, no, Dude, for that's, sure. That's huge. Listen, man, you, you're, you're such a, an asset in the moto and cycling community. I mean, your number one, your content's awesome. I mean, for anybody that doesn't watch it, you're, you're a moto guy. So that's why so many moto, uh, it, athletes and enthusiasts like your content because even though you're a road cyclist you're a moto guy at heart you take your kid out to the moto track you're actually pretty damn good you've done supercross futures you put it in your in your videos you rip but you're man you drop these like informational nuggets and you share content that you probably shouldn't in some cases like you're showing conversations with sponsors on the phone like you're getting a real inside look i cannot urge people enough to go watch some of your recent videos within this train like a pro challenge they're labeled accordingly um i think the one is how to get sponsored um you've got to watch these videos if you haven't seen them and then obviously all the other ones that, that tyler puts out are super enjoyable i look forward to watching them every day my wife makes fun of me she goes you watching that vegan cyclist guy again yeah it's work honey it's i'm it's part of you know i'm i'm, I'm doing my job over here he's going to be a guest on the show tomorrow um so man i appreciate you coming on two times and uh and and shedding some light to this this sponsorship question because I, it is one of the most asked questions that i get um i've even had professional supercross teams um on the privateer level reach out to me and ask how they can level up their sponsorship game so it's a very sought after topic uh and i appreciate you coming on today and hopefully we can have a have a reason to have you come back on again here soon man once this all dies down i'd love to come and actually sit down in that sweet For office sure. of yours and uh be in studio and, and get out your way and, and do some e-bike racing yeah i mean that's we've got high point out here so i know we've thrown around having you come out for an e-bike race if if we can get the high point pro national back maybe we can uh this this year maybe we can uh work something out but we would love to have you in the studio and there's a lot of good spots to ride out here as well absolutely well man i super appreciate you having me on and again it, it's it's so weird to the, the guests you've had are so high level um so influential in this industry and so i it, it feels surreal to even be sort of sitting in, in the same chair as some of these people. Um, but, you know, if there's anything that you can take away from this is that uh, I'm not a pro athlete. I wasn't a gifted athlete. And I started with no audience whatsoever through 
perseverance and making mistakes and then fixing those mistakes. Like if you make a mistake every day and then you fix that mistake, it's just a matter of time before you're awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, no and you know what you're doing. And so I, I don't want people to think like, oh, I don't really know what to do. Like, oh, that guy has this audience. Like it's so easy for him. It Everyone's got to start somewhere. And um, I hope that some of the information I shared here is, is, a, is a value and uh yeah man i i super appreciate you ha- having me on no for sure man we we uh we always enjoy having you on and uh your youtube channel for those that might be new to to your content uh the vegan cyclist or is it just vegan cyclist yeah the the vegan cyclist, the vegan which, cyclist. you know that was a branding mistake <laughs> uh i i tried to cut through the noise so that's one thing is that where you start in your brand really try to think long term no one knows Everyone thinks maybe they're going to have something in the future. Uh, but sometimes I personally, I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. And so now I'm a little bit deep in it. And uh, I wish that I had branded it something different, you know, because it, it obviously has that political charge to it. Um, and so, you know, just think about your brand name. Think about what you're going to do and how you're going to evolve. And that, you know, if you're just in the business of, say, entertainment, focus on that. You're not in the business of selling widgets, right? Be, be an entertainer, make good content. And if you don't, I always say this, if you don't worry about money, you'll never have to worry about money. Right. So stick to your guns, <laughs> make some stuff that no you want to watch. Cause if you don't want to watch your own stuff, no one else wants to watch your own stuff. Right. So yeah, no it. doubt. Tyler, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming on the show. All right. All right, brother. Thank you for listening to the Moto Marketing Podcast. If your goal is to get real, measurable results from your marketing that will grow your company revenue, then check out how Impact Media can get the same results that they have for Moto's most iconic brands by visiting thinkimpact.com. That's T H I N K I M P A K T.com. Have a marketing question that you want answered on the show? Send your questions to questions at Moto Marketing Podcast.com. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. And we'll catch you on the next episode of the Moto Marketing Podcast.